like and sub, like and sub, like and sub, like and sub, like and sub. Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy, and this is going to be a review of the Piranha Mouse Mods Wireless Ultralight 2. This was sent out for review, but it's not going to affect the review. Um, but yeah, this is his Wireless Ultralight 2 design. I'm going to compare it to the original Ultralight 2, and uh, also compare like the uh, design and the quality to this previous mouse I had. This one, um, if you watch the review, I actually wasn't aware that it wasn't assembled by Piranha. It was only the mod kit, and then Nacho Customs assembled it. Really fucking awkward but this mouse was assembled by piranha and uh, i'll talk about the issues and the good things about it because this is a 250 dollars mouse um so i don't know i feel like you should be really aware of what you're going to be getting so first thing i'm going to talk about is the overall quality and there is one unfortunate issue on this mouse and it is side flexing i'm just going to squeeze it pretty lightly I'm just putting in less force than I would while like aggressively claw gripping and uh, you can see that the mouse button is actually moving and uh, this is like with a reasonable amount of force. I'm actually scared to put too much force because I don't want the mouse to like fucking crack or some crazy shit and the mouse is 3D printed so I understand that like the pieces aren't going to be as strong as it is on like a fucking Logitech mouse um, but just putting a normal amount of pressure and seeing this much like flexing like feeling parts of the shell like flex and um, it's rather unfortunate but something that isn't so unfortunate is this new and improved button design you can also um, tension it with a screwdriver um, that he provides the instructions are on the website but basically there's these two tiny holes at the top of the mouse and you know, put the screwdriver in and you can tension the switches to your liking and it is a functional system I was able to tension the switches to what I wanted them to be um, but I would not recommend just like switching it around constantly once you find something you like just fucking stick with it um you can either have it be like really light and uh, not that tactile or like a heavier click that uh, requires some more force and gives you like more feedback um i have mine much closer to that so it's not like extremely light these are kill 4.0 clicks um so they are like a pretty premium switch it should be on such an expensive like fully customized mouse and i do just want to talk about this one change in design um basically in the first review i was making fun of it because it was like just look how much post travel there is there is nothing to really stop the uh click from just continuing to fucking go but now he has actually put this little white piece i'm pretty sure you guys can see it and uh, it just only allows the click to go down so far um so there's like actually no concerns with post travel as you can see i'm putting a lot of force um i'm really like it's a 3d printed mouse so i am gonna be hesitant to like fucking slam it but i can assure you that there have been improvements to the button design i'm not really sure about the shell itself also you can see there's like really no pre-travel either um so like no pre or post travel the click experience has been vastly improved so it's really nice to see that he actually like, took feedback and improved the design and also implementing the uh, like tensioning with the screwdriver that's pretty fucking sick as well um, but next time i'm going to talk about is like the actual mouse this is an ultralight 2 design and as many of you know the final mouse is coming out in like eight days i believe something like that and according to Final Mouse, their mouse is going to be 37 grams and $190. Um, so until at least that has come out, I feel like this is going to be like an impossible purchase to justify for anybody. But of course, nobody is buying a Piranha Mouse for its value. If you want like a fucking good value mouse, just go get yourself like a Viper Mini or something. This is for literally deranged enthusiasts who want a wireless 3D printed version of their favorite shape. And I feel like that is the niche that it fills. And uh, that's probably going to be all. Like, you know, I am extremely satisfied with this mouse because I fit that description. Um, it's 60 grams. And I just want to go over the grip tape for a second. Um, it's easily the best grip tape i've ever tried i am like dragging my thumb down it so hard and it's just so grippy like look at why i do that on the rest of the coating um it's just an insane grip he says it's like random badminton tape um he tried like tons of different ones and this is what he settled with it's fucking good um he cuts out grips like to each mouse so you can see it's not like a perfect fit um but it's getting everywhere where my hands are so you know i'm chilling and i know the grip tape isn't really a selling point for a lot of people i just wanted to know like i've tried a many mouse grip tapes and this is easily the best next time i talk about are these hyperglide dots and these mouse feet are fast more than anything when you have a small surface area of ptfe it glides faster i learned that in my physics class 
Um, but yeah, these mouse feet are fast. I do have one like sort of complaint. Like if you tilt your mouse, you might feel like the actual plastic bottom like scratching. Um, but it's like a minor issue and you can fix it by just like putting your mouse on the mouse pad normally. But if you do tilt your mouse a lot, um, that might be a concern. But of course, it is just a fucking bottom plate. You can put whatever mouse feet you want on it. Um, so yeah, really no issues there either. They're like pretty thick as well. Awesome swagger. Um, using the G305 internal, so the wireless has been not an issue whatsoever. Um, also, my mouse hasn't died on me yet. Been using it for five days, I believe. Um, if it does die, or or you just want to charge it it does come with this uh, magnetic charger super swag super awesome uh but it's a g305 so it lasts basically forever and uh i feel like magnetic charging is honestly the ideal charging configuration can't use the mouse when you're charging it but if you're buying this mouse let's be fucking honest you don't only have one mouse and the holes on the sides are honestly like really good. They're super small and your fingers cannot sink into them. Like it's been no issues for me. And uh, when I play claw, I can notice holes on the sides for sure. And uh, just not on this mouse. Um, the scroll wheel and the side buttons are both just standard G305. Um, and the side buttons do actually feel pretty good for a 3D printed mouse. They actually like, don't have a ton of pre and post travel. There's going to be some present on every 3D printed mouse. It's just how it fucking works. Um, but these were pretty viable for Fort. Fortnite, um, when in the past it's like just never get a 3D printed mouse for Fortnite. Um, and comparing the shape to the Ultralight 2, it is not a direct one to one clone, it is slightly larger. Um, and I was able to notice this before I even like closely looked at the shapes uh, because I am not able to claw grip the Ultralight 2 comfortably, it's just like way too small. Uh, but with the Piranha one, it was just super natural, it's a bit wider, especially towards the bottom. The Piranha Mouse is also a bit taller, and uh, it really does feel slightly larger in hand. If you fingertip, it's more or less the same experience. You're just going to notice that the uh, Ultralight 2 is a bit more narrow. Um, but it's not the exact same size as the Sirius M, which also leads me to believe it's not going to be the same size as the new Final Mouse. Um, you can see it the Sirius M. Wait, fuck, no, you can't. Um... You can see that the Sirius M is like significantly larger than it. And uh, yeah, I feel like for now, you should probably just hold off if you specifically want the Ultralight 2. Obviously, with the other shape designs, you just really got to consider it. It's not a perfect shell. The buttons are getting closer to perfect. Um, the 60 gram weight, that is something that feels amazing. It feels balanced very well. And you can see for yourself that the weight balancing on this mouse is good. I'm not sure what the best way to test weight balancing is, um, but there are no problems in game either. When finger tipping it, it was very nice. It wasn't like wobbling around at the bottom like some other wireless mice do, you know? And I know that Piranha does have like some pretty cool experimental mice coming out. Like he made a, a M1K but it's wireless and it has a scroll wheel. Like shit like that is really cool. Um, but just like standard shapes being 3D printed and wireless, um, I it's hard to justify the value, even with like the new and improved quality, because um, you can buy something for like a fifth of the cost and perform exactly as good, if not better. Um, but there are tons of different options. And if you get the mod kit, um, you basically get everything you need to assemble the mouse, aside from the uh, G305 PCB. And it's around $100, so if you're looking for anything that's good value, I think it would be this. He only has it available for a few popular shapes, but you can see what you're getting. I'll leave the link to his site in the description. But yeah, that's going to be all for this review of the Piranha Mouse Mods Wireless Ultralight 2. No seal of approval, but I might actually get one of those mod kits and just check it out because that would be really good value. That's like fucking half the cost of this um, to have essentially the same thing, just not like put together by him. Um, but yeah, that's going to be all. Make sure to leave a like and sub if you enjoyed. Peace.